Hi, and welcome to the Breakthrough Emotional Eating Podcast. My name is Kristen Jones, and thank you so much for joining me this week. So after we did the Breakthrough Your Brain five-day challenge, which was uh, two or three weeks ago, and I really started paying more attention not only to my own self-talk, but also to other people's self-talk as it relates to how they post in the group or how they respond to things or or the the, the way that they interact with other people on posts. And it it really it made me really aware that I I didn't think that I really knew, and in fact, I don't know if I really know uh, until now I do, but the sign- the incredible significance of self-talk. And I'm not talking about affirmations, I'm talking about self-talk and what how, what the impact is. And so I really felt that it was time to do a podcast and explain exactly what self-talk is why we all, especially me, um, need to pay attention to what we're doing, to how, how we're interacting with ourselves, and then how, what the ramifications are of not doing that, and what that, what that, could, what that can look like. And it's pretty, I, I'm going to say it's pretty significant. I I'm, I'm, was really quite surprised at the, the things, and, and so much of self-talk and so much of the of, of what I'm going to be talking about is all science-based. It's all research. It's all studies-based. So it's not just like, oh yeah, we say stuff so it makes us feel good. This is this has all been studied and so there is a lot of science to back this up. So I'm super excited to be able to talk to you about this today. So if you are new to the, the podcast and you are listening maybe for the first time, uh, you might notice that I'm doing things a little bit different with the podcast in a sense of there is a new intro, meaning that there is a, a pre-intro where I tell you what the podcast is about. Then there's an intro with music. With That intro is always the same. I changed the music, made it a little more, more upbeat. And, uh, and then there'll be what we call an outro, which is something at the end. And that thing at the end, um, I really want you to stick around for. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about it on the podcast, but then there's going to be something else that's going to tell you kind of more details and how to find this thing that I'm going to be talking about. So you want to stay to the end. You absolutely want to stay to the end. Um, If you're a member of the Breakthrough Emotional Eating community, you know I give stuff away all the time. I'm always, you know, I'm always giving things away. I have something for you all. So you want to stick around to find out what it is and how to get it and what it's going to do for you. Because I, I will tell you that I think this this thing, um, which a lot of people have already experienced, is is pretty significant in a sense of I myself was a little surprised at how um, how much impact it had on people and how how much it had on people's lives. So very exciting. So I'm gonna I'll let you know about that at the end of the podcast. Um, so again, if you are new and you don't know who I am, you don't know Breakthrough Emotional Eating, um, what we do, who we are, uh, my name is Kristen Jones and I am the founder and CEO of Kristen Jones Coaching as well as the creator of the Breakthrough Emotional Eating podcast and the Facebook group. And um, we have about 7,000 people in that group and we are all about emotional eating. And more so, not just emotional eating, but taking responsibility for our lives. I think that's more, that's like, that's like the, 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 the super secret, um, uh, you know, kind of the really quiet thing that happens is when someone starts addressing emotional eating and if, they, if they're working with me, you have to take responsibility for your for your own choices, for your own actions, for your thoughts, for your feelings. You have to start acknowledging your feelings. You have to start paying attention to them and you can't ignore them anymore. So there's so many things that come out of somebody just going, oh yeah, I'm an emotional eater and I want to I, I need to I need to look at that. Um, there's there's a whole lot and we have many, many um, members in the uh, the Breakthrough Membership, which is my private membership specifically for people who really want to up-level and want to really work on emotional eating. And there's just so many stories of so many people having just incredible 
experiences and recogni recognizing so many areas of their lives that just by looking at the eating portion and thinking it's just about eating, that it opens up all of these other things in the in, in other aspects of their lives, their relationships, their job, um, how they how they feel about themselves, all those things. So it's it's pretty cool. And um, so we're gonna talk today about self-talk and why the five reasons why self-talk needs to be a priority like yesterday it needs to be a priority you need to be starting to pay attention to what is going on inside your head and what are the things that are being said and and there are really really significant reasons why you need to be doing that so we're going to talk about that today so that's where we are so um if you there's there's a couple things a couple places i want to start and the first one is i want to start with what actually self-talk is and what it isn't and i am going to say that i have been schooled by doing the research that i did for this podcast because i had previously and i saw it in one of my lessons in my um in my online course I said something about, oh yeah, you can, um, you know, the, the, we're talking about self-talk and oh, otherwise known as affirmations. Uh, that would be wrong. No, self-talk and affirmations are two different things. Do they have a lot in common? Absolutely. But they have two, they are two very different experiences and there's, and they are, they present in a very, very different way. So an affirmation is usually something that's broad and it has more of a, um, you know, I, I was thinking about a, 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 I have one, I have an example. I was thinking of one that we did last week. Um, so I give, I give affirmations every Monday. Um, I do, um, in, in the membership, I do, uh, intention setting, intention setting Monday. We set intentions for the week, intentions being affirmations. And so I create a video and I give affirmations for the week and people can use them that week. They can put them aside. They can, you know, save them. And if that, that affirmation resonates now or at a later time, they can start using it in their own, in their own process of, of creating affirmations to improve their lives. But affirmations are very broad and very and more general. Um, so something like, um, I, oh, everything, um, everything in my, um, I have, I have one written down here. Um, what if, okay, so we did a what if one last week. So what if everything in my life is absolutely perfect and I just need to live my life. So that's very, that's very general. That's like, you know, what if everything in my life was perfect? You know, now I'm going to take it to a self-talk that could be done every day, multiple times a day, and is very, very specific. So that could be self-talk in um, something, something to the effect of, um, the struggles I'm the again talking about everything in my life is perfect so you can pick an aspect of your life I'm gonna pick relationships so instead with self-talk it would be the struggles I'm having in my relationship are teaching me valuable lessons so that's very direct that's telling me that's me telling myself I want to look at the struggles that I'm having in my relationship not in a very broad general you know like everything's perfect I want to just say hey these things the struggles I'm having in my relationship are providing me with amazing, you know, amazing, valuable lessons that I'm learning every day. That's more specific. Okay. Even more specific. And again, a self self talk could be something like almost a direction because a, a, a self talk is direction that you give your brain. So another form of self talk on the same topic could be I greet my partner or I greet my husband or I greet my boyfriend with a hug every time I see him or her. Either way, it's you're going to you're you're telling yourself this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm I am going to greet my partner with a hug and and love and because remember we were saying everything in our everything in our our, our relationship is perfect or everything, you know, we're having struggles. Now we're just going to say how we want it to be. This is how I want things to be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my my partner a hug every time I see them, and so it's very, very directive and very specific. So self and self talk is something that happens throughout your day, 
and it's on many different levels. There is self-talk happening right now for all of you as I'm talking that you're not hearing. You're not consciously hearing it. It's just in the background, just silently playing, very, very subtly. And there's self-talk that I'm having. And there's self, and then there's self-talk that I, as I am saying, like I, like I just said something and there was a thought that came to my head of, ooh, did I say that right? That's a form of self-talk. That's another form of self-talk. And instead of me questioning myself, of, oh, did I say that all right? Now I can just say, yeah, yeah, of course I said it. Okay, I said it the way I said it. And that's, that's just me being me, me being authentic. I'm just saying what I'm saying. So we try to really pay attention to that self-talk. And, and today we're going to talk about why, that's, why that is so important. So again, self-talk is very much prescribed, directive, instruction that you are giving yourself and it is and has the ability to change the makeup of your brain and it doesn't matter this is the cool part it happens every day it's always ongoing there is no age that you are something too young too old you know too too retired too busy at work there is not anything that's going on where your self-talk is not morphing and changing your brain every single day. And so it's not just, it's not just looking back at, oh, let's look back at our childhood and try to change things. Like we could look back at something that happened an hour ago, that thought that we had an hour ago, and we could say, gosh, you know what? I could really work on that because that actually changed my brain. Our brain is constantly evolving constantly changing and when I when I was I was reading that I was like wow this is really cool because you you never have to feel stuck because you always get to control the talk that happens inside your head each one of us always gets to do that it is not you don't have to sign up for a course you don't have to sign up for something you don't have to be a certain way every single person gets to decide how do I want my life to go and what do I want to do? And in every moment, we can, we can change it. We can make it better. We can make it worse, unfortunately, but we do that. And so what I really want everyone to hear is how powerful you, me, all of us are in our own lives. We are not waiting for other people. And I, especially, especially if, you're, if you're in any of my groups, we don't sit around and wait for other people to be nice to us or other people to do certain things for us to then make changes in our lives. No, we, we take control of our lives. We decide what's going to be best for us. And then we facilitate and make that happen. And that's what I want for anyone who's listening. If you feel like you are just waiting for other people to do stuff and then your life can get good, Mm -mm. You're, 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 you've got to, you've got to realize how powerful you are and that it's all on you. And that may sound like, oh, it's all on me. Well, yeah, it is all on you, but it's also, who it's all on me. I get to decide how this is going to go. Not other people get to make that decision. I think that's super cool. And that's what we, again, that's what we try to work on with, with in the group. It's try how, what I try to work on with any of my clients is that empowerment of what do I get to do? How do I want my life to go? So I'm going to give you five reasons why you need to make self-talk a priority so your life moves in the direction that you want it to move in. And we're not just talking about weight loss. We're talking about your whole life. So that's pretty exciting. All right. First reason. Reason number one is self-talk physically and chemically changes your brain structure and it changes it every day as I said it's constantly evolving and constantly changing and so you are with with what you're thinking you are making changes to your brain so now you have to think are those changes that I'm making to my brain right now are they positive or maybe are they things that I don't really want to have happen maybe they're things that that I wish were a little bit different and maybe, maybe, you know, if I'm honest with myself, maybe my self-talk really needs a pretty significant overhaul. And it needs one that happens all the time. Because you're, again, you're chemically changing and physically changing your brain. And, 
and you're doing it. It's in your power. It's within you. You get to decide how that's going to go. So before we go any further, I'd love to, and again, I'm live in the uh, Breakthrough Emotional Eating uh, community. I would love to hear in the comments. I would love for people to, to comment on your self-talk. Positive right now? Is it more positive or is it more negative? So all you have to do is write positive, negative, either one of those things. And it's just you being honest with you. This isn't having to do with anybody else. Because remember, we're not waiting for anybody else to, to, to help us do this. This is all about you. So it's you being honest with you. How is your self-talk? Okay, so put in the comments. Positive, negative, what is it? Okay. Thank you all for, oh, I love the comments. Thank you so much for... Uh, for doing it and and absolutely I just saw a work in progress and 100% a work in progress always and that's the part that I want you to remember is that it can change at any time so anybody who's writing anybody who's written negative like in within the time of this podcast it can change for you it can change you can change it okay you get to decide you can change it and that is what that's what's so amazing about this is it's all it's all within it's all within your power you get to decide and we don't get to beat ourselves up we don't get to tell ourselves how stupid we are because we you know oh my gosh we we we, i can't believe we've done this yeah let that go that that doesn't serve anybody we've got to move forward so what what are you know what if it's if it's negative then how are you going to change it and you're going to change it by learning and listening here all right so again you, I'm going to tell you all, I'm just going to be honest. I had to write like literally like books of uh, pages of notes here. So I, and I have to, I, my, I've looked them over and I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So, um, I'm going to have to be checking my notes. I'm just going to be honest. Um, so w- one of the things that you get to decide is what are the areas of your life that are causing your self-talk? What are the areas in your life where you're more prone to negativity and you're more prone to negative self-talk? And one of the things that we always have to remember is that what we give in the way of our language, in the way of our, you know, the whatever we say and the energy that we give out, that only comes from us inside. So if you answered negative to your self-talk, that automatically means that there are things about you that you don't like. And I think we all have things that we don't like, but you're letting the things that you don't like about yourself overshadow everything about you. And so that's what we need to become aware of is, is we all have, we all have things that we're, that we, that we are, we're insecure about. Everyone does. And, but, but does that make you forget all of the amazing things that you have going for you? All the amazing qualities and traits and, and, and characteristics that are just a part of who you are. And if that's happening and if you're forgetting and all of that's just like nullified because there's this one thing and that's, I really suck at that and that's what you keep saying, then, then that's, that's, that, that's the programming that's gonna happen. So when we talk about programming, we're talking about all of those, those voices and those things that we're saying to ourselves and we're imprinting those things on our brain every single moment of every single day. You can change it at any time, but what, what are the areas that you're doing that in? And, and, and are you allowing that one area where you feel insecure? And for most of us here in the group, it's gonna be, body image. It's going to be how we feel about our weight, how we feel in our clothes. And that all comes from how we're talking about ourselves. So yeah, it's time to, it's time to kind of be honest and say, okay, so what, what am I, how am I contributing to this? How am I? Cause, because, because no one else is contributing to it. You are. And, and if you, if you say, well, gosh, well, so, you know, these people are telling me that I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. And my comment back to that would be, why are you listening? Why are you letting them determine the kind of person that you are? You get to determine that and you get to do that through your self-talk. All right. So again, the first thing, 
chemically and physically your brain is being changed by the thoughts that you're having about yourself, your self-talk. That's huge. That's significant. You have power in both directions. You need to know that that's happening with every negative thought. You are changing your brain towards more negativity, but you can in any moment of the day, change it and shift it back and be more, be more attentive and more um, on top of what the words are and the thoughts are that you're having. All right, number two, uh, you're currently, currently, your self-talk, it's kind of, a, it's kind of a, a piggyback on what we first talked about. Currently, your self-talk, and this goes when I say yours, that means everyone, everyone walking and listening, um, everyone's self-talk is about, se- they, they, they guesstimate that it's about 77% of the time negative. Negative, self-defeating, false, and working against you. So 77% of the time, your, your self-talk is just burying you. So you're already coming from a deficit because that's already happening. Because again, it feeds on whatever it's, ob- it's obviously done. It, that, that negative, that negativity has started to is already changing it and it's keeping it in that position. So we really, really need to make sure that we are paying attention. What is, what is our, what is, you know, where, where, what is our, our, what is our self-talk? What is the direction of our self-talk? It's already 77%. So not addressing that high level of that high, that high percentage of the time that you're thinking negatively, not addressing that and not consciously making an effort to change it is going to continue to increase that percentage of thoughts being negative. And again, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Now, how does all of this, these first two things, how do they relate to emotional eating and to weight loss? They relate directly to emotional eating and weight loss. Because if you're saying all of these internally, internal things about yourself that are negative and you're just brutal and you're not giving yourself a break and you're just on yourself all the time, you've shaped your brain into believing that that is who you are and that's who you are now is who you're going to be in the future. You're creating your future self right now with what you're thinking. That's a big one. You are creating your future self and your future results, successes or failures by what you're talking and what you're talking and saying to yourself right now. And that is so big because it's not just like, oh yeah, it upsets me. It causes me to want to eat. Yeah. You're, you're like putting that in cement right now. If you're, if you're moving in the direction and you're not, and you're not acknowledging like, gosh, I need to make some changes. I need to, I really need to, to make, to make some things happen. Um, all right. So number three, when it comes to self-talk, there are things called scripts like self-talk scripts. And I am getting most of this information from a book. This guy has been around forever. He was a, uh, he was a, a compadre of uh, a buddy of uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. Uh, his name is Shad Helmsetter and he has been writing books forever. And this is 365 days of positive self-talk for weight loss. And again, so I'm going to hold it up. I'm holding it up in the, in front of the camera. So if you are um, listening again, it's Shad, S-H-A-D, Helm Setter, H-E-L-M-S-T-E-T-T-E-R. And the book is 365 Days of Positive Self-Talk for Weight Loss. And this book has every day of the year, it has a self, a, a, a self-talk statement. Now, does that have to be the only self-talk statement that you use? No, but you can use his as examples of, of how you want to formulate your own self-talk and catch 
when negative self-talk kind of creeps in. Because again, anytime we're calling ourselves names, anytime we're putting ourselves down, we're calling ourselves stupid, any of those things, we have to be aware of that and just kind of bring ourselves back to like, hold on a second, that's not what we do. And so he has provided some examples and some really researched scripts of statements that can be made that you can make for yourself that will create and make that change, that chemical and physical change to your brain that moves your brain in a positive direction towards success with whatever it is that you're working on. So that is, uh, that's, that's the basis of the book. But what he's, what he, upon reading this book, one of the things, and this is, this is what I, I say. So there's three things that I always say that all of us need if we're going to address emotional eating and we're going to lose weight. That's time, patience, and consistency. We have to, those three things are so important. Time, we have to give ourselves time and we have to not be in such a darn hurry to get to the end. Patience, we cannot expect that it's going to happen overnight. And consistency, we have to keep doing the same thing over and over and over. And this really proves that because number three, when it comes to the reasons why you need to be paying attention to your, to your self-talk is repetition is the key. And when I say repetition is the key, I mean you're either repeating positive thoughts to yourself and making those good changes, or if you are saying the same horrible thing to yourself every single day, think about what that's doing to your brain, what that's doing to your life, what that's doing to your belief about yourself. You are absolutely twisting that and you're imprinting that on your brain. It is becoming a part of who you are. That is becoming a belief that's not true, but you are, you are going along with it. And so repetition in either direction, if it's negative repetition, oh my gosh, that's so damaging. If it's positive uh, repetition, you're actually changing those things. And again, remember, you can change them at any moment in any day. You start going, you start doing the positive and you start moving in that direction. So it's really, really important to just remember that we have to, if we're going to make these changes, we make them and we commit, we give ourselves grace and patience, but we give ourselves time and we're consistent and we do it on the daily multiple times a day. And so it's re it, it, and again, if you're, if you're really serious about it, I mean, there are Facebook groups about positive and again, positive self-talk and, and it's not just about saying super happy things. It's really, it's really deciding how do I want to think about myself? How do I want to think about my life? How do I want to move forward? And what do I want to do and create in my life? And I can do that by my thoughts. Not so that's the power of it. Um, okay, so that repetition, again, we have to keep doing it. We have to keep, we have to, and so that means having some kind of, of system, having some sort of routine. How do you build yourself up? How do you start, start the day? being consistent, doing something positive. I know so many, so many people in the membership are, are creating morning routines. And actually we're going to be talking about that today. We have a, a coaching call after this, and we're going to talk about like, what does it look like to establish a routine that gets you in a positive place moving forward as you're, as you're, um, as you're, as you're starting your day, because you need that, you need that because then you need to build upon it. So just out of curiosity in the, in the chat, how many of you have a consistent routine that you do every morning that is like clockwork, whether it's like you get up, you feed the dog, you get a cup of coffee, you go and sit down on the back porch and you watch the sun come up and you read the newspaper or you look at your phone. What are, what is your do you have, actually just answer, yeah, yes or no, do you have a morning routine? Yes or no? Do you have a morning routine? And that's a consistent routine that is, you know, it's sacred, it's your time. Do you have a morning routine? Put that in, yes or no, in the, um, in the chat. I love it. We've got lots of people with morning routines. Good. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good. 
Lori Wright will get you in morning routine. <laughs> we will absolutely do that. It is, it is, in, it really is amazing how it sets the tone for your day and it really just shifts everything and really makes it, makes it something that is, um, you just, you build yourself up first thing in the morning and your day just, your day just changes completely. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. So again, consistency, repetition, and doing these things, because again, we have to be, wor we have to be careful because if we do repetition in a negative way, that's, that can be very damaging. All right. Number four. Ooh, I love this one. So this is a combination of, and, and most of you probably will, will recognize this as, as visualization, but seeing yourself acting and living in the way that you want to act and live in your life will exponentially get you the result that you want. You are much more likely to get the result that you want when you visualize and see yourself and replay yourself acting and living in the way that you want to be living. Even if that's not what's happening right now, how do you want your life to look? How do you want your life to look? Start thinking about that. Start visualizing it. Start what are the steps that I'm going to need to take? And then you actually take the steps and, and all of those things kind of come together. So it's, because again, those thoughts, visualization is a form of self-talk. It's a form of, I see myself doing blank, blank, and blank, and it's amazing. And I feel super, and I, I'm feeling really inspired. So making sure that the thoughts that you're having about yourself and, and, and what your life looks like, you are creating a visual picture in your mind that is something that you want to have happen. And you can replay that over and over and over again. And it will, it will absolutely help you move forward. And you are much more likely to get the result that you want and have the success that you want when you think about that, you think about those things. So what's the significance of that? How many of you, and I'm not going to make you comment because I, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I know I've done it. How many of you have called yourself fat, have called yourself horrible names, horrible names because you didn't, because you overate or you felt like you didn't, like you didn't follow your plan or something didn't go well, or you went out to dinner and you overate. How many of you have said and used and, 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 you know, called yourself fat, called yourself a fat pig, all those, you know, just awful, awful, awful things. How many of you have done that? I just want you to think about that and think about how much, how much you imprinted that on your brain. Cause you probably didn't just think it once. You probably thought it a lot and you probably might be thinking about it a lot today. How much imprinting are you doing on your brain right now? As we're sitting here, as you're listening, I really have to think about that because those, those thoughts and those visuals that we create, they are creating our future life. As you're sitting here listening to this podcast, you are creating your future thoughts and your future life with the thoughts that you have going on with that, with that surface level, the conscious, the unconscious, the stuff we don't even hear, all of it. You are doing all of that. How do you want to have it go? How is it really going? And what do we need to do to make those changes? And again, it's not much. You just need to, you just need to decide that you're going to start thinking in a different way about yourself, about those people around you, about your circumstances, about your situation. And you get, and, and, and then things start to change, like almost instantaneously, they, they start to change. You might not really feel them, but it's going to happen. It will happen. Those things will change. Um, and how that relates to weight loss is, is really, is really obvious. Again, if you're calling yourself names, <clears throat> how are you going to, <clears throat> how are you, if you're forecasting and putting out how your life, how you're going to be in the future, if you're saying all those horrible things to yourself, it's exactly where you're going to be. You're creating, 
your future success or your future failure with the thoughts that you're having now. So it's time to start making those changes. Like ASAP, right now. Um, and so number five, the last thing, is that your attitude and how your day goes is directly 100% determined by the thoughts that you create and that you have. So if you are not happy with your life right now, it's the self, it's your self-talk and it's what you're doing. And you get to right now decide, you know what, I don't wanna do that anymore. I'm taking my power back. I am not going to let my environment and those people around me, I'm not going to let that dictate. Nobody gets to be in charge of me except me. So if you're feeling like, as we're talking about this, and you're feeling like, oh my God, this is totally me. This is awful. I'm doing all these horrible things to my brain. Okay, absorb that. But then say, okay, wait a minute. Again, we're beating ourselves up. We're saying bad things about ourselves. How about, gosh, I have so many, like, there's nothing but opportunities for me to turn this around. And I can turn it around right now. Like right now it can be different. I can make that happen right now. And that's what's really exciting. And that's what I want people to hold on to is there is just so many, there are so many things that you can do and so many different. And again, all it takes, all it takes is recognizing, oh gosh, when am I saying bad things about myself? And how about we change that? How about we change like, what am I not happy with and how do I want things to be? And then I'll, I'll talk about that. I'll have those be my self-talk scripts. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to handle everything. Everything's going to go smoothly. I'm going to be really happy. All of those things are just forms of self-talk that we need to keep reminding ourselves that that's how we feel and that that's what we want in our lives. And we will then create that and that will come to fruition in our lives because we'll feel better. So we'll start doing things to make those things happen. And that's where the magic lies. So it's, again, awareness, honesty with yourself of what's really going on, and then deciding, okay, I'm going to start making changes and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to catch myself and I'm going to kind of laugh and just kind of go, okay, we're going back to it. We're not going to beat ourselves up because that doesn't do any good. We are going to just make sure that we are setting ourselves up to be the best possible person we can be for ourselves, not for anybody else, for ourselves, because that's, that's who we're taking care of. I hope that this, I hope that what we talked about today was helpful and kind of gave you all some, some light bulbs and some ideas of like, Ooh, you know, I, and again, there's nothing that I need to tell you, like, this is what you have to do. Like all you have to do is start paying attention. What am I saying to myself and is it mean? And if it's mean, I need to like catch myself and be like, nope, we don't say that to ourselves anymore. We don't do that. And just move on, move on. That's it. But it's, but it's, it's stepping in and taking care of yourself in that way. That's what's so important. Um, so in regards to what I talked about at the beginning of the podcast, when it, um, I had mentioned that we did a challenge a couple weeks ago. And what I have done is I have put together the, the uh, Breakthrough Your Brain Facebook group is going to be closing. And so what I've done is I have taken all of the lessons, so the one to five videos that, that I created, and I put them into five steps. And that is going to be available to anyone who wants it. Um, that you will have access and you will be able to, to um, have access to the, to the videos um, and to the, the write-ups that we had and the worksheets and all the things, all the parts of what, what was the five-day challenge. I didn't want to call it a five-day challenge. It's now just a Breakthrough Your Brain guide. It's a five-step Breakthrough Your Brain guide. And I kind of explain it as these are the, if you're really looking to address your emotional eating, and start to make some changes in how you feel about yourself, how you view yourself, and, and, then, and then how you look at yourself physically and the way you want to take care of yourself. This, these five steps are the first five steps you need to take. Are they the only steps you need to take? Absolutely not. They are just scratching the surface of what needs to be looked at and how deep we need to go when it comes to looking at why we overeat, 
why we put ourselves in a position of, of hurting our bodies um, merely because food tastes good and we don't want to acknowledge emotions. So if that is something that if you're kind of like, hmm, I've tried some things, I've tried some things, I know some things work, but you want to kind of go a little bit deeper, you want to have the, um, the access to the videos and, the, and the, the worksheets and the things that we did in the Breakthrough Your Brain 5-Day Challenge, it is now called the five step, five step Breakthrough Your Brain Guide. And so if that is something um, that you are interested in and that's something that you want, then absolutely. I am going to put it in the show notes of this podcast and it will also go in the, um, I have, I will have it in the comments in this post. So you will, there's a post in the Facebook group. I will have it in the comments in the Facebook post, post as well as the show notes. Um, and that will also be on my YouTube channel where we show the video as well. So totally available to you. I encourage you copy the link and give it to a friend, you know, share this with people because so many people are just waiting around for everybody around them to be nice to them, to make for everybody around them to make their lives better. No, it's up to you. You get to make your life better. You get to decide, do I want to be happy? Do I want to be happy where I am right now and not wait for that next five pounds to come off? Because because if you keep thinking that and you keep thinking, well, if I just did better and if I just was more disciplined, that's going to that's going to backfire. That's not going to give you what you want because you're changing your brain and you're morphing it into a way that is not going to be beneficial for you. So lots of, lots of awareness, lots of being present, lots of listening to yourself and slowing down and just being kind to yourself. That's really, that's really what this is all about. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. And again, the uh, link to the uh, five-step breakthrough your brain guide will be available in the comments in the Facebook group as well as in the show notes for my um, uh, the show notes for my um, my mind's going blank the show notes for this the, this podcast that's what I'm talking about all right have a an amazing rest of your week. Uh, thank you so much for those people who came on live. We changed our date and our time, and I appreciate you all being here. Um, and again, just remember, we're always we're always doing something. We're always that the thoughts that we're having are creating impact on our bodies. Do you want it to be positive, or do you want it to be negative? What do you what which which direction do you need to go in? Because you're creating your future right now with what you're thinking about right now with what you're thinking about, you are creating your future. Make it a future that's going to be a success. All right. Okay, everyone, take care. I'll see you soon.